I do have two practice cases um, just to go over how to use um, either the external cause code or our Z codes, um, our factors that influence our health. So both of the cases that I have on the practice have at least one of those. Um, so let's look at this first one. Our patient's a 50-year-old, 54-year-old who was admitted for possible gastritis. She's undergone a cadaveric renal transplant for end-stage renal disease one year ago. That's what the abbreviation ESRD is. She was taken to the OR, so to the operating room, where an endoscopy of the lower esophagus and stomach was performed. There were patchy erythemas noted, so biopsies were performed. And our final diagnosis is mild reflux esophagitis, esophagitis and mild um, antral duodenitis. So, what we need to code in this patient is both um, the reflux esophagitis and the antral duodenitis. So, there's each going to be a code for each of those. And then she had um, this history, right? We just spoke of history. She has a history of the renal transplant. So, renal is kidney. So we're going to code a history of kidney. And then we had a procedure here too, right? She was taken to the OR, where an endoscopy of the lower esophagus and stomach um, was performed with, they found this patchy erythema, and so they biopsied those. So our procedure is that endoscopy with the biopsy. So altogether we have four codes, three diagnoses and one procedure. So let's start with our first one, right? We're going to code the esophagitis. So in our index, we're going to go to E. And then find the esophagitis. And so once we get there, our said it was mild reflux. So we want to see if we can find mild reflux. I'm on page 136. And there is reflux, right? K21.0. So let's flip to the tabular and look at K21.0. Okay, so if we go um, to 691 is where K21.0 is, there's not an additional character to add there. So K21.0 is complete, reflex esophagitis, that's the code we want, so we're going to write that down. And let's go to our second code, the duodenitis. So go back to our optical index, we're going to look up B for duodenitis. So, page 122 in your alphabetical index is where duodenitis is. We have two choices. We have nonspecific peptic, which is K29.80, or with bleeding, which is K29.81. So, did our scenario say anything about bleeding? It didn't, right? Perfect. So, yes, we're going to do the K29.80. So, now again, we're going to go to our tabular. K29.80, look and see if there's any includes notes, excludes notes, any additional characters. So page 693 is where this is, K29.80, and there's nothing special there to do, so we're going to go ahead and just assign that code. So now our third code that we have to do, our, our last diagnosis, is this renal transplant status. So we're going to go to our index and go to status, meaning she 
we've already had this dot. Status means it's already taken place. Actually, let's go to transplant. That's an easier way to find out. So if we go to transplant on page 313 and then go down to kidney, it gives us a Z94.0. Kidney transplant status, I'm on page 1246. There's nothing special to do there, right? Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and assign our Z94.0. And now we just have our procedure, which was this endoscopy of the lower esophagus and stomach with the biopsy, right? So remember that our main term or root operation for a biopsy is going to be excision, right? Because they're just taking a portion. So they're taking a portion of the stomach. So in your PCS book, I'll look up excision. Let me grab my PCS book. Okay, so excision starts on page 53. Do excision of the stomach. So that gives us zero dB six. So let's to that table zero dB. the approach, we know it was through a scope, so we're going to pick eight via natural or artificial opening endoscopic, right, because they put uh, the endoscopy go down through the throat through into the esophagus, right, so that's an artificial or natural opening, so our approach is eight, then our device is Z, and our qualifier, because they did a biopsy, that's diagnostic. So our qualifier is going to be X. So our four codes are K21.0, K29.80, Z94.0, and then 0DB68DX for our procedure. Okay, let's go to our next practice case. Exactly. It's 
not an inspection because they did something, right? An inspection is just when they go in and look and don't do anything. Don't take a specimen, don't cut anything. They just really go in and look. Yeah. Yeah. So like, a, um, you know, if the patient had a colonoscopy, you know, once you hit 50, you're supposed to have a colonoscopy, right? So if they'll go in and look, they don't see anything abnormal, they don't take any biopsies, um, they, uh, brushings and washings are things that they always do just so that they can see that's part of the inspection, but they actually cut tissue or, you know, um, find polyps and remove those, those kinds of things, move it from inspection to actual surgical. Okay, so in this practice case, um, our patient, 74-year-old female, who was cleaning her bathroom at home when she, um, that should be slipped, I wasn't typing very well, obviously, slipped and fell backward into the bathtub. She complained of back pain. She has had several similar falls in the past and lives alone in a single-family home. She was admitted and x-rays were taken, which did not reveal any fractures but did show some degenerative disc disease of L4 and L5. She was treated for pain and discharged to home on day two with a home alert system in place. Her discharge diagnosis is lumbar sprain due to the fall and a probable TIA. Okay, so in this case, um, we have a lot to code, right? We have the sprain is our principal diagnosis. Remember, with inpatient coding, the UHDDS guidelines tell us that our principal diagnosis is what brought the patient to us after study, and then we code any secondary diagnoses, which again, per UHDDS guidelines, are those that are significant, that complicate care, um, require more treatment, or require, you know, chronic medication treatment, for example, like congestive heart failure, atrial fib, hypertension, those are chronic things that are always ongoing treatment. So we're coding the sprain is our principal diagnosis. And then we have to code the fall, right? And since we know where the fall happened, it happened in her bathroom, right, in her bathtub at her own home. So that's our place. We also are going to code this probable TIA. Remember, in inpatient coding, we can code diagnoses that say probable, likely, suspected, uh, rule out. We can never code ruled out, ruled with a D at the end, but we can code rule out in inpatient settings. Um, outpatient settings, we cannot code prob probable, possible, likely. Inpatient settings, we can. And the reason is because in an inpatient setting, you're taking the time to investigate these and work these up. Outpatient, that's not the case. So, we're going to code the TIA. We're also going to code that she had this history of falls because that's pertinent to what's going on, right? If she's falling all the time, that's a concern. Um, we're going to code what she was doing. Um, so she was cleaning and she slipped and fell. So we're going to code her activity was cleaning. Um, so there we go. So let's start with our spring. So, of course, go to our index. go to spring. So under spring, we're going to go to lumbar. I'm on page 290. Yeah, good. Perfect. So S33.5 so we know uh, there's a check mark, so we know we need additional characters, so we definitely go to our tabular, but you always want to go to the tabular regardless of what you, you're seeing that or not. So if we go to S33.5, page 978, sprain of ligaments of lumbar spine, so we have our check mark with our X, the seventh that I was just talking about at the beginning of the lecture. So with that, we're going to do 
S33.5, so that's four characters. So we have to add two X's, right, for our placeholders, the fifth character and the sixth character. And then our seventh character, if we go to the beginning of S33, the category, we're going to pick A for initial encounter. So our first code is S33.5XXA. Okay, so let's go to our next code, which we're going to code um, next the TIA. Go to attack, it's on page 35. So under attack, we're going to go down to transient ischemic. And we see G45.9. We Our doesn't specify, so we wouldn't pick the indented G45.8. We're just going to do the G45.9. Let's flip to the tabular and verify that code. And there's not, right? So we're just going to do the G45.9 as our second code. Okay, so now let's do our fall. So in your index, make sure to go to the external cause index. And we're going to go to F to fall. I'm on page 419. So she fell, um, she slipped and fell backwards into the bathtub, right? Bathtub or shower. So under fall, I'm in the third column on page 419. There's fall and then in bathtub. So that's what we're going to pick, W18.2. Do you see that? Okay, perfect. So W18.2, and then we have our check mark again to let us know that we need um, additional characters. So now let's flip to the tabular, W18.2. And we're going to add our seventh character, but we need our placeholders to get to that, right? So we're going to add placeholder X for the fifth and the sixth character. And then it was the initial encounter again, so we're going to do A for our seventh character. So our code for the fall is W18.2XXA. Okay, so we know where she fell, right? It tells us she was cleaning her bathroom at her home. And then it even told us it's a single family home. So we need to go back to our external cause index and code the place of occurrence. So in your external cause, cause index, go to P, go to place, which starts on page 24, 424. And then uh, page 425 is where we're going to be because it was her residence, right, her own home. So we're going to go to residence, and then under that, we can pick house and single family. So our code is Y92.019. Again, we want to go to the tabular, verify, see if we need anything else with that code. Nothing 
else to do with that code, right? So we're just going to go ahead and assign line 92.012. Okay, now if we know the activity, we want to code that also. And we know the activity as uh, she was cleaning, cleaning her bathroom at home. So now we're going to go back to our external cause index, and we're going to go to A to activity, which is on page 408, and then we're going to go to cleaning. So I'm on the third column of page 408, cleaning, and it says cleaning floor, Y93.E5. Okay, Y93.E5 for that one. And then we also want to code the history of the falling. So we're going to go back to our regular index to H and go to history. And make sure that go to the fam, or not the family, go to the personal history, right? And then to fall. So I'm on page 170 under personal history, the third column. Personal history of falling is D91.81. So all together we have the S33.5 XXA. G45.9, W18.2, XXA, Y92.012, D91.81, and Y93.85. Okay, do you have any other questions?